Football League, I've said it before, and they keep proving me right. They are the best reality show on TV. We'll talk a little NFL now with Diana Rossini, ESPN NFL reporter. Hit her on Twitter at Diana ESPN. Joining us here at Keyshawn J. Will and Max with Keyshawn Johnson, Harry Douglas. I'm Freddie Coleman on ESPN Radio and ESPN2. Diana, we start with Zach Wilson and that injury. Jets fans are concerned. How concerned are the Jets about another injury involving their young quarterback about to go into his second year? Well, Zach Wilson's in Los Angeles right now, and I can tell you uh, the Jets staff and the team, they, they essentially have their fingers crossed right now uh, because he's getting this knee procedure, and they're hoping that this procedure is going to fix something that, that will get him back on the field in roughly two to four weeks. But uh, as you guys know, especially you, Key, sometimes what happens during these knee procedures, you discover more issues. All right, the doctor surgeons go in there and they see that there's bigger problems. So they're hoping that's not going to be the case. And, and even after the game, when I was talking to sources in New York, uh, after the injury, they were really relieved that it was an ACL. Uh, and, and they knew that pretty quickly. They were really concerned about him having re-injured those ligaments that he dealt with last season. Um, so really for now, they have to wait that's all they can do. Um, but, but going forward right now, it seems that Joe Flacco is QB1. And, and guys, you know, I can tell you, I've been at Jets practice before. I've, I, I've, I obviously talked to a lot of them there in New York. And, you know, it's funny. I was standing on the sideline um, not long ago, and I was watching Joe out there, and, and, he, and he was taking reps with the second team. And I, was, I actually happened to be standing with a member of the, of a, the Jets coaching staff. I kind of... Uh, cheated off the media line and was kind of on the sideline. Probably shouldn't have done that, but I did it. <laughs> and I said, you know, it's funny. I watched Joe, and he, he just looks like a quarterback, right? He's just so traditional. He's the quarterback that – the type of quarterback makeup that I think the, the four of us, right, kind of grew up watching. The, the mobile quarterback, the Lamar Jacksons of the world, you know, the Patrick Mahomes. Those are, kind of, you know, the, the new fresh error type quarterbacks. And I said, it's just so hard to believe that he can't play anymore. And just as I said it, Joe throws a bomb. And the coach looks at me, he goes, he does still got it. He's just a little older. And so, you know, I, I had that thought in my mind today, knowing that Joe can run this offense. He's 37 years old. I know he's not perhaps elite, uh, but, but I think he can do this. Yeah, Diane, I love everything you just said. If the Jets want to win three games this year, they should keep him at quarterback. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know I any know. other way. I don't Jade. know any other way. I don't know any other way. I, Jade. Yeah, no, nah, he <laughs> – now, his day's way behind him. You know, we're talking about injuries and stuff like that, Diana, and especially in the preseason, guys getting hurt, whatever the case may be, at the quarterback spot. But a guy that I wouldn't want to see on the football field without a contract – is Lamar Jackson. What's the latest on the situation in his contract negotiations with the Baltimore Ravens? Uh, Baltimore, you're on the clock, right? So we reported over the weekend that Lamar essentially gave the Baltimore Ravens a hard deadline saying, you've got four weeks. You got till week one, and then I'm done negotiating. Um, you know, and, and head coach John Harbaugh, he has been pretty transparent, I think I think so, uh, with the media saying that, that you know, I feel good we're going to get this done. But, Key, I, I don't know. I, you know, because I've been talking to you guys every week since pretty much February, talking about Lamar's contract, and I keep saying, yeah, it's going to get done. I sound like the Ravens sometimes. Um, but here we are. And and every day that goes by is, is just more risk to injury and more of a distraction, more of a problem, right? Because it's all we've been talking about when it comes to the Ravens. We haven't even really gotten into them as a team because this is a gigantic question mark for them. You know, and then we have to get into what's going to be next then if Lamar's deal doesn't get done. How do the Ravens handle this? Um, so, you know, look, they're going to tell you, the Ravens at least are going to tell you, we feel good about this. We'll figure it out. And it just makes you wonder, what, what is Lamar asking for? The number must be pretty high. Yeah, Diane, I got to ask you this. When you think about Lamar Jackson in week one, how surprised would you be if he actually goes out there and plays week one without a, de without a deal being done? I, I won't be surprised. I think that's the kind of guy Lamar is. I think Lamar just wants to play football. I think he wants to go out there 
and if anything, uh, kind of prove even more, I mean, even though he doesn't have to prove anything or anything, we can all agree that he deserves to be paid. He deserves to be the future of, of the Baltimore Ravens and the starting quarterback in the face of the franchise. But I, I think it, he, there's no, I have it, I find it very hard to believe that Lamar Jackson's just going to sit out and not step foot on the field, just knowing how he's played this, this entire time. You know, although I think we could all probably have a pretty long discussion about, is that worth it? Is that even smart? Mm -hmm. If he had an agent, would an agent be, you know, holding him back saying, you, you're crazy. You're, if you get hurt, you're taking such a chance of perhaps losing a lot of money. And, and, and I know the other side of it, it's like, well, Dak got hurt and he got paid. Uh, and Lamar's good enough that he would, he would be fine. But we know how much Lamar relies on his legs, that if, that if he were to get that type of injury... I'm I'm not I would be concerned. I'm not stepping anywhere near a football I know. field in week one. Period. Period. You're not it's, it's not gonna happen. Uh, and if if that means that my teammates have to suffer for some weeks, then so be it. You guys will just have to suffer. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Not he, I don't it. think he's like that, though. Like, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm like more that. like you in that sense. <laughs> like, I, I don't. That, I just don't think that's his makeup. I, I, yeah, he's well, a different kind of cat, and in in, in, in in a great way, in a great way for him, you know. And and you know, he just wants to play football. So we, we we will see. And look, the Ra <laughs> the Ravens don't want him to get hurt. You know what I mean? Right. So they have that on their mind too, because they're going to try to make this investment. Um, so we'll see if this thing heats up, guys. But the fact that this is the first time we're hearing of uh, what we're, you know, it's not like an NFLPA or a contractual deadline here, but the fact that Lamar is saying there's a deadline, he is done negotiating before the start of week one. Uh, you know, that that's the most news we've gotten in a while. See, see y'all in a couple weeks. That's what I'll be saying in the preseason. See y'all a couple weeks, man. <laughs> you, 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 let, let, you know how that first deuces game on. go, man. You already saying deuces, deuces. aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And that first game might be against Joe yeah. the, Flacco. Flacco, yeah. The Jets. New York Jets, and that would yeah. be interesting. Yeah, as well. Diana Rossini. Good luck, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ESPN and Rural Reporter joining us here on Keyshawn, Jalen Max, and ESPN Radio. Staying in that division, Joe Burrow trying to recover sooner than later from that appendectomy. He seems to be getting closer and closer to getting on the field in terms of practicing with the Cincinnati Bengals more. What's the likelihood, Diana, that he'll yeah. be on the field week one of the regular season for the Bengals? Uh, I, I have a really good feeling about it. I talked to some sources last night in Cincinnati. Um, in terms of, let's just start with where we're at now with Joe. Uh, he just participated in seven-on-sevens. He didn't do any team drills yesterday, but obviously, you know, it's going to be a slow process getting him back out there. There's no need to rush him. The Bengals are most likely not going to be playing their starters during the preseason. I don't think we're going to see much of Joe Burrow. And do, do we really need to see him? I, I think I think we're good there. Yeah, you know um, what I do think we need to see, guys, I do think we need to see that offensive line together, right? Because we saw they had some O-line issues uh, in their first preseason game. And, and, and even uh, a source there was sharing with me, these guys haven't even really practiced together, uh, you know, Collins hasn't even practiced, period, you know. Um, so th they need, they just need some of that time, and and I think we got to give it to them. Although I think we're always going to have some question marks because I don't know about you, but but um, you know, Harry, I know you were with me at that game um, for Titans and Bengals, but just watching Joe get hit as much as he did in that game last year in the playoffs, uh, it's it's kind of stuck in my head. That needs to get fixed. Yeah, I want people to understand that that doesn't happen often. Well, you can get sacked nine times in a game, especially a playoff <laughs> game, and you still win that game. But for Joe, I mean, excuse me, for uh, Joe Burrow, he can't keep getting hit like that because he had the ACL already. He had a, a little minor injury last year from getting hit. He's only a year two. So that's two, two years he's played, and he's had two injuries. You don't want that as your French, from your franchise quarterback. Yeah, you, you can only take being hit no, like a pinata no. for so long <laughs> if you're Joe Burrow. I don't care how young you are. Just and they, they, they made a lot of investment in this, you yeah. know, guys? Yeah. Like, this isn't they like, did. this isn't an issue they ignored. We, we're not having a conversation of what the Bengals front office doesn't care about Joe Burrow, right? The conversation we're having is they made the investment in talent. They put money into it. They mm -hmm. know that was their Achilles heel last year. But this needs to develop. This needs to get moving by September. Yeah. I'm going to Cabo to train while y'all 
play the Jets. Let me know when y'all <laughs> how it works out. <laughs> yeah, how it works I'll, out. I'll, you know, <laughs> doing this for a friend as far yeah. as that goes. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going down with my family. <laughs> <laughs> Hit her on Twitter, Diana E. Has been always I love you, Coach job. Harbaugh, but I can't <laughs> stick around. <laughs> Diana, always a pleasure to talk to you soon. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Diana Rossini, ESPN. Oh, yeah. It's the first reporter. thing I'm telling them. Yeah. <laughs> the, that's going to be the first, the last, and everything. Oh, yeah. I, I love y'all, but I'm getting ready to go to Cabo, man. I'm going to work out it, down there. Let me know how it, it goes. Here's the thing about it, right? Because you can be the ultimate team guy, yeah. but there comes there comes a point where you have to be selfish when it comes to yourself, especially in situations like this. You talk about your money. You talk about your legacy. You talk about moving forward uh, so your kids, kid, your great, 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 great grandkids don't have to worry about anything. Be selfish, man. You have to sometimes. Well, Lamar is being selfish, but that trust factor allowing him to believe that a lot of himself. I, I yeah. Yeah, still, we'll, I can be able to do it. Yeah, we'll see if that works out. Either way, that'll be a very intriguing thing, whether he goes to Cabo or not. With Keyshawn Johnson, Harry Douglas, and Freddie Coleman, on Keyshawn, J. Will and Max. And we're going to get to the real truth when it comes to Baker Mayfield starting a quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. This is ESPN Radio and ESPN2.